it's not just that, because I take four different containers to go to the dozens of tablets every day. And I was just chatting to Val earlier and saying that we're saying it's a side effect of the tablet, of the steroids that you where you're at. So I say steroids, but I don't want to take them because it's given me osteoporosis, but adrenal failure now. And Val was saying that's a one day problem, and steroids seem to be the answer. Um, I guess for me and my family have always known about asthma. I've had asthma all my life. My relatives have had asthma. My great uncle died of it back in the year dot, but that was before um, there was any inhaled corticosteroids. It was kind of an exception, but back then you could die from asthma. And we had the opinion that you still could die from asthma. It wasn't until mine got more severe that we realised it really shouldn't be that severe. It should be controllable, but there's nothing out there to control it. Um, when I was asked to give this talk, I spoke to my mum like when she thought my asthma got severe because to me it's kind of always been there in primary school. I've done some gym, I've done some art, I could do a lot of the things I wanted to do. And she said she realised that it was when I had when I was excited about the process that actually started once a year. That's when it first came out back in '98 or '99, I think it was, when I was just a child. And she said that it really hit her that must be how much it impacts on your life when you can't do things. She didn't realise that that's quite how much it kind of impacted on me. But sadly for me, that's kind of the last time that I can remember any new drug really coming out until November this year when he spoke about it. Little mum, which I luckily might possibly be able to try when I you know, see it in clinic because I'm in Scotland and it's been approved up there, but sadly in England it's not been approved and that's a really sad to think that it's back to that post-code lottery of certain drugs are getting sort of approved in some countries and not in others when now we are the United Kingdom and hopefully it'll stay that way. But it'd be nice if England and Wales and everyone was asking for me in time to get some drugs to get like that. Um, I guess just now, I kind of feel like I'm living in a bit of a limbo about when I'm going to next have an attack. I don't really know what's going to trigger it. I know definitely I'm very allergic driven, but it's not always that way. I think that's one of the difficulties of living with severe asthma. You just don't know what it is that's necessarily going to be the trigger, and you can't always avoid the triggers. You don't know if you're going to walk down the street and someone's going to put a cigarette smoke in your face, but you can't live your life not uh, sort of going out and you have to expose yourself at some time and taking that risk. And I think a lot before, I took a lot of risk with my asthma, I think. I'd have to say when I was younger, uh, when I was 18, I left to live in Canada to see stuff could, so I could train as a ski instructor and work as a ski instructor and just determined my asthma wasn't going to stop me doing anything and with that I ended up in hospital intensive care out there and came home and since then my asthma was a lot worse because of the damage that pneumonia did but again because steroids were just thrown at me and that was the answer to everything I kind of rebelled a lot more and was going to go down to study sports science down in Winchester and was determined that I wasn't going to take steroids because I wanted to play sports. I didn't want to end up with side effects because I now have from the steroids because steroids were the only option you were ever given. It was always fitness wins, chest bar coach and fitness flow and played a lot of sports. I didn't want to do that so I wouldn't take them with my hands up. I didn't used to admit that I wasn't that yeah. compliant but now looking back it's I didn't want to have my life controlled by something and end up with side effects from a drug that it worked for a short time but it wasn't a long term thing. It wasn't going to sort of cure everything. When you stop taking it, things would probably get worse again. And it ended up, um, I was in hospital when I was down in Winchester. I think it's Southampton. Neil Mesh came and spoke to me and asked me if I was trying to kill myself by doing what I was doing. And I was pretty upset because he said that because 
never want to hear about social media either. It frustrated me, but it made me sort of stand up and listen. And I'm quite grateful for them saying that because it meant I understood my answer a lot more now. I don't take the risk that I used to take, I guess, because I wanted to live my life, but in understanding why I'm being given steroids, why I'm being given certain medication, it makes a difference. And now, just this year, I did a lot of work with my consultant in Edinburgh, and because I worked as a nurse in the Royal Infirmary, I was doing my doing pheno every two weeks to see what my pheno was, and we adjusted the steroids appropriately. And because we managed to do that, I was able to fulfil a dream and sail across to Scotland uh, last in February being and hopefully we're going to come next year. But I was very lucky in that I, because I worked in the hospital, I could go to the lung function lab every couple of weeks to do my pheno, which not everyone has that opportunity to do, but we found we could get really good control of my asthma by doing that because we could so tinker with the dose appropriately at when it was going up and when it was going down, and we found that being on 14 milligrams has meant it's been quite stable, but that's a luxury that I have that no one else has. It'd be really nice if other people with severe asthma could have could have that. Um, sorry, I kind of digressed a bit. <laughs> um, when I was doing this, I was writing this talk as well, um, from the speaker, I spoke to some other severe asthmatics that I know, and I was quite shocked at the number of people said they don't want a cure, they just want better management. They said a cure would be great because we want a cure for everything, but they just want better management and better understanding that people have to, you have to live a life. And a lot of people are kind of thinking that doctors just throw steroids. And people don't like the side effects often, but often. I guess when you're not living with it, you don't know what the side effects are like. You get the insomnia, the long nights awake. You're not having to live with it. And I think that was one of the big things is that um, patients just want the doctors to kind of understand a bit more and work in partnership, which I've been really lucky that I've had with my consultant. It's made a really big difference. And she also knows now what it is important to me in my life. I work part time as a dialysis nurse in the like, community based dialysis nurse, and she knows that's important to me. So, we maybe I'm on slightly more medication than as much as I need, but it means that I can live the level of life that I enjoy and sort of won't be ill the whole time and can just yeah, enjoy what I'm doing. Really. So, I guess just now what it is that people with severe asthma want is they just want people to work together to get new treatment so it's not just significant and it's just the asthma to everything. And essentially by having a group like this with everyone together, it's the best thing for someone like myself and Val and the others out there. It's having a room full of well, I remember reading when my chest was bad, reading some of the names like Look at Adele and things, and I'm thinking, oh, I've only had to have them as my doctor, but having a team of everyone together working to benefit the patients, I think that's one of the best things you can get. So I hope this is successful. Thank you, Olivia. Sun comes through your window.